Hi there! In this video, we're going to talk about constraints. And this really has to deal with the elements in our interface builder. All right, so let's get started by opening up our Xcode. And we're going to select create a new project. It's going to be a single view application and click next. I'm just going to call this constraints. Let me see. <laughs> constraints. There we go. Constraints app. It's not really going to be an app. Um, we're not going to be connecting uh, any of the elements to code, but this is just a demonstration on constraints. So the rest should be, if you've used this before, be auto populated. The language is Swift, devices is universal, and we're going to click next. Save it to your file. And here we go. Here it is. Now I'm assuming that you have some knowledge of Xcode. Um, even if it's just one or two of my videos that you've seen on my channel, but we're going to go right into the main dot storyboard. I'm not going to worry about discussing anything that's in here for this purpose. So go to main dot storyboard and let's see, here we go. There's our view controller right in our storyboard. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to have a label, a text field and a button. So I could go down here in the lower right in my uh, utilities pane if you do not see it go up to the upper right button it'll say hide or show the utilities so if i click on that it disappears click on it again and voila there it is all right that's about the extent of my french okay so now i could go through here and pull out the items that i need but the quickest thing to do is just to start typing it it'll filter through so i'm going to start typing in label and there's the label i'm going to drag that out to my storyboard. I'm not going to really deal much with its these blue positioning um, guides. I'm just going to pop them down. The next thing I need is a text field. So there's text field. So I just started typing in the word text. I'm just going to give this some room. Nothing great. Okay. The final thing is button. So I'm typing in button. There's the button. And there we go. All right, so I'm going to give these some background colors just because uh, it'll be better to see. So clicking on my button and I'm going up to my utilities pane and I want to go to the one right in the middle. It looks like an arrow pointing down. So it's the show attributes inspector. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to scroll down. Now we know we're on our button because it says button right up here. I'm going to scroll down until I see the background. It's under the view. So background is set to default. I want to make it a color. Let's see. I think I'll make it uh, make it this orange color. If you don't have some recently used colors up here, not to worry. You can simply go down to say other. And I'm just going to pick it from this crayon. Let's see. I'll make it, I'll make it red. Eesh, that looks terrible. <laughs> That's okay. I'm going to make it red. Let's see if I can click the label and change that background color to blue. There we go. And let me just go back in here, click that off, make this a little bit bigger. All right. Again, I'm not worrying about these Xcode blue alignment guides because they're really not doing many favors and I'll show you why. All right. Let's close out our utilities pane by clicking on this upper right button. There we go. The next thing I want to do is I want to open up the assistant editor, but I want to, we're going to do it a little bit different. So here is an interlocking circle. This is the show assistant editor. So I click on that and by default, I have it set up to go to my view controller dot Swift, which is normally the case when I'm making connections, which I'm not going to get into in this video, but like I, I've said before in my previous videos on building out small and simple apps, I show you about those connections, but for the purposes of this one, I'm going to switch it to not be the view controller.swift that I want to see, but I want to see a preview of my storyboard of what it would look like in the simulator. All right, so just to do that, I'm going up to automatic here. I'm going to go down to preview and I'm going to say, click over to main.storyboard preview. Okay, this is what I wanted to show you. This is what it's going to look like in the iPhone simulator. It's not exactly looking like we have over here. Let me just close this out here. Okay. It's not exactly 
what we got going here. Everything looks pretty decent. It certainly doesn't look like this, that's for sure. And now if I go down, this is currently in the portrait mode. If I go down right here where it's got the square and this uh, counterclockwise arrow, I'm going to click on that. And that's going to show it to me in a landscape mode. So if I give it some room, see, it's fine like that. But again, switching back over to portrait, eh, not so much. All right, let's get that set up so that they the looks will be consistent, whether it's in a portrait or landscape mode. All right, now, the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to click on this label. I'm going to go down to these three buttons down here, and I'm going to the middle one. It's sort of a square in between two vertical lines, and it's the pin button. So let's click on that pin button. And the first thing I want to do is I want to set its constraint. I want to set its upper constraint on where exactly it's going to fall below the top of the view. So I want to set it to be a certain distance from the top of the view. And to do that, I just merely go to this sort of this red bar up at the top and I click on that and it's got it set to 62 points. And that's the distance between the top of this button, I'm sorry, the label, to the top of the screen. And it goes down here and it says add one constraint. All right, that one is done. But now look, in our preview, it gets shifted all the way over to the left. That's an easy fix by going to back down. We're gonna to go to the alignment tool, which is right to the left of that. So click on align. And what we wanna do is down here toward the bottom, it says horizontal center in container. And what that's going to do is just horizontally center it. So I'm going to check that box, leave the zero right here. We're not going to deal with this for now. I'll get into other videos that we deal, get more in depth with these constraints. So I'm going to just click add one constraint. Okay, perfect. That looks pretty good. It's in the center of our preview. We're going to simply do the same for the text field. And I'm going to go back down to my pin button, click on it. This time, I'm going to, I mean, not this time, but I'm still going to click the top. And this is going to be the amount of points it is from the next element, which is this label. Okay? So it's going to be 34 points between the label at the top and the text field itself. So, again, I click on that bar. I'm going to add one constraint. Perfect. But look over here. It's got it just over to the left again. Well, as we know, go down to our alignment button, click that to check the horizontal center and container, add that constraint, and you guessed it. We're going to do the same thing with the button. Click on the button, go to the pin. That's going to be 50 points. I'm going to just do the top constraint, go down and, add, and click the add one constraint button. I'm also going to center align it. So I hit my align, go up to the horizontal center in container and add one constraint. Okay, so let's test this. So this is, hang on one second. I don't know why it's showing up in that size. Oh, I know, let's go over here. Okay, we're gonna click on this. I want to go down to the pin. Oops, open up pin. Something's going on, so let me just check this out. Okay, there we go. And let's do, okay, we're gonna do its width and height as it is as it appears on the canvas. So add two constraints, I'm gonna add its width and its height. I could have done the same thing with the label and the button, but for some reason the text field was acting wonky about this, so I'm gonna just manually um, determine what the width and height should be. Okay. So now add two constraints. All right, there we go. That's looking good. The label and the button all look good in the preview to the right. And I'm gonna go down to the bottom and click this arrow. Looks fine. Let me give us some room here. Looks fine in the um, landscape position and it looks fine in the uh, portrait position. These will always stay the same distance. This distance from the top, the label will always be these amount of points from the top, and these will all be the same distance apart, whether it is portrait or whether it is landscape. See, they're all gonna be the same. Okay, and just to prove my point, 
It's always fun to just run that in the simulator. So I'm going to go up and run and build it. There we go. Build succeeded. No surprise there. We didn't really do any coding. So <laughs> it's all about constraining. Okay, so there's our constraints app. And here it is. Now, if I want to rotate it, I can go up into the iOS simulator menu and click on the hardware and hit rotate left. And there you go. Hardware and then rotate right. Okay, everything looks good. We'll get into more detailed constraints about getting these to align with each other on various sides and things like that in videos upcoming soon. Don't forget to subscribe to The Code Lady and look for a brand new full course uh, on beginners level Swift coming soon, uh, hopefully mid-summer. Um, and that's going to be up on, uh, hosted up on Udemy.com. So subscribe, like The Code Lady on Facebook and to find out when the course is released. Okay, thank you for your time.